Now, hopefully you can see this. Oh, my hand's a little shaky, but we'll get there. This is a, a perfect typical primary secondary loop. Now, follow my knife point. This is the boiler. If you look, you have a feed and a return right here and back into the boiler again. That's the two very closely spaced T's that we talked about. Actually, if you can read the writing, it actually says no further apart than 12 inches or four times the diameter, whichever is shorter. So they want these T's very, very close together. And basically on the T, on one of the T's, you actually have the circulator right there. And it's a very large circulator. It's the, the boiler loop circulator. And if the water circulation is going down, if you see the arrow, into the boiler, back out, up and through this pipe, into the double space T's, and back down and around again. That's when those circulators are on. Over here, this main large line is now your boiler water. There's your expansion tank. Here's your two zones, actually two circulators, and two flow checks. Now, the circulators are pushing upward, if you follow the arrows, and it's just simply, the valves, by the way, are in an off position because that's the only way you can see them. They actually would be on, the four ball valves. So all you simply have is two circulators pushing into flow checks, and that would just go into your baseboard. After it goes through the baseboard and returns, there's two return lines here from the system. Back into the same one pipe. The same single pipe. You got your feed going off. Your return's coming back. And that's a two-zone system on a primary secondary loop with the two closely spaced T's less than 12 inches apart and the large 0014 circulator or whatever the manufacturer asks for going into the boiler and out. Now that's it. That's that simple. Primary, secondary loop. You got your circulator for your boiler and your two system circulators or how baseboard circulators for your zones. Now I covered something up here in white paper because I didn't want to confuse you so it looks so confusing. But I'm simply going to add a hot water storage tank to this system. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Remember, you don't tie into the boiler anymore. You tie into this main line for everything. If you were at a third zone, there'd be a third circulator there, and there'd be a third return there. This pipe is now your boiler water. And by the way, this is the expansion tank and the cold water feeder valve too. You even feed the cold water into this pipe. But watch what happens when I shake the white paper off to simply add a storage tank for domestic hot water to take a shower with. Now, it's in gray, so not to confuse you with the boiler water, but it's nothing more than a simple T into the water line with a circulator pushing into the storage tank and then back out of the storage tank, following the gray line, up, and the return. Now that's, don't forget, one T is on one side of the closely, closely spaced T's. The other tie-in is on the opposite side. So you have your circulation in the tank and out of the tank back to the, the main pipe. This being your circulator for the indirect hot water heater. And of course your hot and cold to your shower isn't shown. This is specifically boiler work for your hot and cold. And by the way... This little circle right here is in case you didn't want to have circulators for each zone and you just wanted one circulator and two zone valves, then that would simply just be the circulator there on the main line, your two zone valves on the T's, your circulator pushing, and of course as the zone valve opened, the water would go up and through the baseboard and then return the same way into the T's coming back. So whether it be zone valves or circulators direct, you could have it easy either way. But that's the perfect example of primary secondary piping. Zone valves optional, of course.
Oh, and by the way, those people interested in the um, the um, the performance 007 circulators, I did a class on them, and I told you to go online for a uh, for the curve chart to uh, find out what circulator best fits. Hopefully, you can see this. I did download it. I actually had it, and that's for the 007 circulators and the and the curve. Boy, it's still hard to see. I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can see it, but anyway, I'll try to give you an example. Uh, this being a 007, where the point of the knife is. Your gallons per minute is across the bottom. And your, your total head loss in feet is the side and you probably can't see it now you may have to download this on Takeo's website that's all but that is the curve chart to, de to determine the proper circulator you need to find out your gallons per minute and your head loss in feet and then you find a circulator that can handle that particular uh, situation how many gallons per minute you need and handle the head loss at the same time and that's the, the, um, the curve chart that Takeo puts out